Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how sane do you think you are? <laughs> are you sane in an insane world? Or are you insane in the same world? It's very complicated. And I think most yeah. feel like we're insane. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> most insane people would say that they are sane and that the world is crazy. So I would have to say that um, I think I am a little bit insane. Um, there are, you know, throughout the course of my life, I sometimes become aware of, of delusions that I had been mired in, uh, imagining them to be reality itself. And then only learning eventually that they were just a story that I've been telling myself about myself and about what is real. Uh, so I would, you know, maybe I, I, the most I could say is that I'm becoming more sane thanks to the revelations that have been gifted to me, sometimes in a humiliating way, um, but also sometimes in a very gentle way where, but, where I, yeah. But it could also be that you've, been relating to other insane people. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you know, when when some somebody comes into your field and says, "Hey, you're you've lost your way," you know, you're deluded. Um, it's it's a moment for a reality check, and maybe they're the ones who are deluded. I mean, this this has been, you know, during COVID, for example, this was a big. I went through a, a big, long process of, you know, because to me during COVID, it looked like the world had just gone crazy. And sometimes people who I had respected would say, no, Charles, you're the one who's gone crazy. Um, right. The health authorities are protecting the public and you're putting them in danger uh, with <laughs> your skepticism, you know? Right. And, and I was like, Oh, maybe they're right. Like, how do I know that they're right, or that 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 they're not right? And like, am I just going to assume that because it's me that I'm right, and not look into why I believe the things I believe? And and so I went through quite a long process where I didn't speak out for quite a few months because I wanted to be sure. And um, so that was a case where where the the uh, criticism and and critique of others and undermining by other people actually kind of got in and turned into a poisonous self-doubt uh, but you know eventually um I, I i i guess what i what i did is i just went all the way down to the basis of who am i in this world and what are my deepest convictions and um, what do I know for sure? You know, because I had started to go crazy in the sense of doubting what I knew from direct experience. I'd begun to gaslight myself. Well, then again, your your intuition is telling you something that is what maybe makes you feel insane that you know something that maybe other people know could know better. But your intuition is saying, no, they don't. I know. Right. That. Yeah. I just am always a little bit careful about uh, invoking intuition as kind of the conversation stopper. Well, you know, of my course. intuition says so. So, so, because a lot of people, you know, will say that their intuition says that, you know, so and so is, you know, evil in some way. Uh, and I just know I'm right, you know. So I, 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 I handle, I mean, that's the whole question, you know, like what is authentic intuition and how to distinguish it from wishful thinking and and how to distinguish it from what um, contributes to a glamorous self-image. Well, in the public, and, and that's the thing, is how do we relate when we are people who are using our intuition to smell things let's say <laughs> smell smell the rat <laughs> and, yeah. and when we smell the rat uh, we want to make sure that we're not imagining right 
because we can get into trouble for that uh, with other people saying, no, there is no rat. Right. And so we, it's a learning curve. And, and I think life is a learning curve of getting to know ourselves, our instincts, our feelings, and we need each other for that. You know, I, I, I'm so happy that you are married to someone who is highly intuitive and, um, and I, I can't wait to, to meet her at some point soon because um, it's, I'm very impressed with knowing about her. And so uh, we need each other to help us find our sanity and to find agreement. And, and during the pandemic, I, I was like you, Although I, I must say that I was, I had spiritual downloads of information, of scientific information that gave me clarity within myself of what to expect. And then when I heard from particular scientists who agreed with me, <laughs> who got into trouble themselves, <laughs> uh, yeah. then I knew I was right. And I, I never hesitated in being true to what I, I believed. And, and uh, then I ended up having support groups for those of us who were considered insane. <laughs> right. And so that's one of the reasons why you have uh, the Sanity Project. But, be, but before we go on, I never even introduce you. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I love it. I, I, you know, yeah. it's just the way things have to be, you know, divine order. Uh, so you were Charles Eisenstein, and uh, I've been a, a great fan of yours for for years, um, and, uh, and and subscribed to your more beautiful life essays, and um, and I love your um, the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible book, and um, and and you have so many things going in your life of people realizing your wisdom and how much you have to offer. And one of the things that I love about the book and about you because of it and understand who you are and where you're coming from is how you dedicate the book and you dedicate it to the humble. And to me, that says everything. As soon as you say that, <laughs> mm -hmm. I get it about you. You know, how real you are and honest you are. And then I want to hear everything you have to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes people ask me, oh, you know, Charles, who have been your teachers, you know, who have you learned from? Um, who is your, who, who's your guru? And like, you know, I say, honestly, it's not anybody important in from the outward perspective. You know, it's not anybody whose name you would recognize. It's not, you know, somebody who has a spiritual ashram somewhere. But it's been very, very humble people who are like doing menial work at the bottom of the pyramid, but who do it with an extraordinary amount of love and joy and humility. And in my worldview, those people, I mean, they could be working in a daycare, you know, they could be working at a gas station. They could be a janitor in a building. Um, they're, usually they're doing some kind of service work. Uh, you know, they could be like a home health care person um, changing bedpans, you know. Um, but these, from, from my perspective, they are impacting our world just as much, if not more, than anybody who looks powerful in terms of money and politics. I love that. Yeah. This is why I love to ride on the subways in New York, where I live, and chat up people all the time. And it's amazing, because I'm always finding things to, just to admire about people, and then I'll tell them, or you know, even if they're carrying a heavy load, I'll say, well, you're carrying such a heavy load, and then all of a sudden they want to interact with me about it. And I, and I love that because I get to feel the spirit in them and, and it's called the God in them. And I just love having so many experiences with anybody to see their deep nature that they expose through simple talk. 
and it's beautiful. And so <laughs> I understand. That's why I'm so happy to talk with you because you you are somebody who gets it about everybody. And and we all need that. That's the only way that our planet is going to grow is to honor the God in everybody. Yeah, it's important to have people who see that in you, you know, and, and for me, it's important to have people who see that in me and then I can see it in others because when it's seen, it becomes more real. Yes. You know, and, and if somebody's looking at you in a belittling way, in a dismissive way, seeing you as less than you are or less than you could be, then like, you know, you tend to shrink to fit their lower expectation. But wow. if they're seeing you as as your potential, as your divinity, then it's a pretty powerful call to rise to that to that seeing. And and that's one of the things that we can that we can do for each other uh you, you know, every day, all the time. And 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 to but it requires a kind of a sacrifice of the judgments that you know, we might have grown up learning to judge others in order to elevate ourselves, you know, to like that, that habit. Our egos need that. Yeah. yeah. Our egos need to judge everything and everybody. And it's hard when, when your ego is in survival and the only way you're going to feel good is to make yourself better than others. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I think that that habit is is fading, you know, for a lot of people. A lot of people are now understanding that that they don't need that, and people are so ready. I'm I'm noticing it, like even if I'm in airports and stuff, um, people are more empathic than they were ten or twenty years ago. Yes, I mean it's almost like a cliche that consciousness is is rising but it kind of is <laughs> you know in, a, in these very mundane ways well if you look historically yeah. through our, our not too long you know 100 200 year history you'll see that there was much less empathy you know there's much more inhumanity going on yeah and now there's more consciousness yeah i was thinking of a little uh dispute i had with a uh flight attendant um I, I had sat in the wrong seat you know and then she like wouldn't let me move to my right seat which i had paid extra for to get have some leg room and like she was a little like really rude you know and i was like oh man i'm gonna let her have it and i'm like no no no, she's really busy you know and so instead i was really conciliatory and then she was really conciliatory and like we ended up friends you know oh, good. rather than just escalating into yeah i'm gonna report you to the to the you know <laughs> um and like I, f I feel like both of us had a choice point where we could have written the other one off as oh this is a horrible passenger or this is a horrible flight attendant but we had a choice point where we you know had a moment of consciousness and maybe not in these particular words but but we each of us said no that's not who i want to be that's not how i want to see people I want to be friendly. I want to to carry goodwill. And you know, I mean it's a tiny tiny little incident compared to what's happening, you know, in Gaza, you know, or hundreds of other places on earth. But who I was 10 years ago? I don't know. I don't know if I would have made the same choice. Right. Well, you're older now too. Your wise wives are older. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you know, and you have kids. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and you you know, I one the reason I was able to reach to, to be able to do this with you, because you're you're you know, you're playing in, in a big world right now with so much demand on you from so many big players, and I'm really not a, a big player. And so uh luckily we have a mutual friend, <laughs> our mutual friends, uh Ross and Heather, and and so uh so I learned that you were a friend of, of theirs. I I uh, I said, well, do you think Charles would be interested? And 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 Ross said, he's you know he's a really regular guy. <laughs> he's an, uh, yeah. You no, know, he's he's not uppity. You know, he, he'll be happy to do this with you. 
and um, and and he, you know he he said that you're you know part of his life your kids are, are homeschooled together and mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a beautiful world he has um, created and and uh, you're part of and the two of you actually take cold plunges into a nearby pond together <laughs> yeah he moved away from that pond we we were we were we were all we had a small group of guys who were doing it last year you know like chopping a hole in the ice if necessary and and it's amazing because he had a sauna next to the pond but but uh, he moved so uh, we haven't actually done it this year all right but you're still getting together because you have kids and homeschool yeah. together so that's that's great so i i you know i there's so many ways that i'm i'm learning about you that are, are are really what's important to open up that space to create a better future in the world. And I'm, I'm happy to know you about that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Peter. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. And and I'm, and I'm also I know that you're 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 working on uh, on Bobby Kennedy's campaign with him, and and for them to recognize you as um, somebody who can be a benefit for that is wonderful. Yeah, I never thought that the kinds of ideas that I talk about and write about would ever have a home in, you know, a main, like a serious political presidential campaign. <laughs> it's pretty shocking. Right. Well, but, it can be, you know, because you're a humble guy. Well, I'm not sure what it has to do. I'm not sure. No, the, it's not because I'm humble that that I'm shocked. It's just that I thought that the gap was too great between the the world that I inhabited and the mainstream. That's humility. But, <laughs> well, in any case, it, it, it's, um, <laughs> that's how I see it anyway. You know, it's like okay. Like, let me put it this way. Um, ideas that I have have held for a long time that were like so alternative that like there just wasn't a listening for them. Like they were relegated to the margins called alternative. Okay. Now I'm like, I have not, you know, compromised these views, but there's actually a listening for them. Um, you know, in a political campaign, like I just never thought that would happen. That that something that had been like, hopelessly radical, hopelessly alternative, is now edging a little bit closer. Well, let me say that I think because I've been following you for years, and I I have read your wisdom and everything you had to say, and I think what you're talking about is, however alternative you've been, you've been very wise about it, and that wisdom. Is, is is has po potential for everybody well that's very kind of you to say um you know i think maybe i'll say something about wisdom you know it really is a relational thing um there are certainly, um, you know, I've definitely had situations in my life where I've behaved foolishly. And it could be that certain people bring out the fool in me. Uh, it's, it's like our chemistry. And other people bring out the wise man in me um, because maybe there's, it's like, gosh, I was going to say, uh, I guess I could say I've, I've, there's some things that I've thought a lot about, you know, and developed, devoted my life to understanding them. And that was a process that took many years, many decades, even of, of holding a certain question in my mind. And when others find me, who are holding that question also, there's a natural resonance and a channel opens up and I can speak from what I have learned through my decades of holding those questions. 
And so to that person, I seem very wise. Right. Really, and, really. And you yeah. met Bobby Kennedy personally, and he saw in you what he needed because he comes also from a very humble history, personal history of, of great struggle and and learning to believe in himself. And, yeah. and so he holds that kind of wisdom that you're talking about, about yourself. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it's the same kind, you know, what, one thing I, I, like, I have my disagreements with them. You know, <laughs> Good. <laughs> some, some quite profound disagreements. So, Good. you know, it's not like I finally found the person and I'm going to support him as president because I agree with him hundred percent on every issue. Uh, to his credit, he keeps me around, even though we do disagree <laughs> on important things. Because he knows better. <laughs> but what I really see in him that makes me trust him on a deep level and admire him, um, he genuinely does not believe himself to be better than any other person. He 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 has a certain humility that probably comes from his history of addiction. You know, right. he was he was a heroin addict. He was an alcoholic. He went through recovery. He does. He goes goes to twelve step meetings like pretty much every day. Um, and he he you know people who have not been through that very often think that that's because they're better. You know, oh, well, I would never you know destroy my family and destroy my health and do all these terrible things just to get high. I would never do that. People don't understand until they've been through it. That is not a matter of morality or willpower that makes one person an addict and another person not. When, when you've been through it, you realize this could have happened to anybody if they had been born into different circumstances, because we are all fundamentally the same children of God. You know, we are all the same fundamental thing. We are a divine soul. And, and so when somebody has been through that humiliation then i mean humiliation in a sense is a good thing if it makes you humble right right um, and so he's somebody who has been through that and um from that comes a genuine compassion for others right and when you go to 12-step meetings you certainly hear from others that you learn to build compassion for yeah and I, I have a nephew who went through all of that and He's, a, he's just such a beautiful person today. Um, yeah. And actually, my, my, my son went dry about a year and a half ago. And I'm very proud of him. He's proud of himself. And yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. world when you see people recover. And so, so but it's, it's so great to talk with you. Um, because, you, you know, you, you're somebody who gives us hope uh, because of being so human. And, and being so human in a world where we all need to learn to trust our own humanity or trust our own vulnerability, our own failures and recoveries and, and, and believe better. And I think you offer that. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, I appreciate the reflection and uh, you know, <laughs> find, find the truth in it and, uh, you know, let it work on me and maybe I will... I I live up so. to that. I hope so. Live I hope, up to I, your generous words. To, to be a help to you is, to me, such a blessing. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious more about about your uh, cards. You know the, the cards thing. That's that's very intriguing. So maybe. Yeah, and, and my audience knows a lot about cards because I've done yeah. shows about it. So yeah, I, I, we can tell them that you're, uh, if you don't mind, um, sure. an eight of hearts, and so you have an infinite heart. And, and anyone playing the eight of hearts are, are, are beautiful people because you just, you come from love and caring and it's beautiful. And so, and and you know, you're also playing the 10 of clubs, which means, you know, you, you hold, your mind holds keys to the kingdom. So uh, that's why people want your help and uh, to hear from you. And that's why you write such beautiful stuff. So let's talk about that. Um, your book, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know is Possible, is a wonderful book to read. But also, I subscribe to your uh, essays and, and other you know, videos, etc. So can you tell people how to do that? 
That's on Substack. That's, I put my most of my creative output now on Substack, which is, I guess, Charles Eisenstein dot Substack dot com. I think. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. And if they and and they can subscribe because I get every yeah. uh, month I get a notice yeah. that I paid for the subscription. Well, you can subscribe for free too. The 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 and the free subscription gives you the same content. So you know, paying is only for people. I'm happy to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, paying is for people who want to give me a little extra encouragement. You know, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm so glad to be able to do that, and um, you know, it, it's it's I'm telling I'm I really am grateful that we had this conversation because, um, and I think the audience will be glad to hear from you, from your soul, to be hearing from your soul in this talk today is so beautiful. And, and I'm, I'm grateful that we could, I mean, I don't, I'm not surprised that your soul needs to speak because <laughs> you're that kind of person. And, and there's so much we haven't talked about, about the world and how to improve it. You have the sanity project going um, and that really helps. And you give talks all over the place and, um, share your wisdom with so many people and and you really um, attract large audiences and and I think that's the people everybody's reading your cards whether they know it or not unconsciously because it's your vibe it's just a window to your vibe so everybody can see that you're this infinite heart you want to hear hear it speak <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Oh, so thank you. I, I'm I, I'm so honored to to be able to talk with you, and and uh, hopefully we can talk again. I, you know, I, yeah. uh, I well, know I'll connect you to Stella. Maybe that'll be the next. Yeah, one. yeah, that too. Yeah. And okay. also, I, you know, I know you're very, very, very busy. So I don't know uh, at some point when things slow down for you. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but thanks yeah. so much for being here today, uh, Charles Eisenstein. I, I I love talking with you. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Delightful. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at PRN.live. I can be reached at Peter at Heart River, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening.